So what a day it's been. I uh, woke up early this morning to watch the uh, big event from the uh, Sony PlayStation 5. I wanted to record it, but because I didn't charge my phone overnight, all I could do was watch it, have my phone on charge on my laptop, and pretty much send uh, Tim from Rageland Gaming um, some messages as we were watching it. And he was recording, uh, doing a reaction video to that. So check his channel out. He's, he's done a really good uh, reaction video to, to it. <laughs> I can't believe, mate, you didn't know about Ratchet and Clank. We'll get into that a bit later. Um, I'm really hyped for this thing right now um obviously we don't know a price on this yet and i want to touch on a bit of some of the things that i'm a little bit concerned with one thing is definitely the price um i'm still thinking for here in australia it's going to be anywhere between 749 dollars to 799 dollars just for the console and then you got all these peripherals you got the remote control you got the hd camera uh, an extra controller that's going to be expensive as well um the headphones which looks really good but um, I really love the whole design of it. And the, the way that Sony led up to revealing it was really clever as well. Just showing those little balls just moving around. And slowly we would get that reveal. And when they started doing that reveal, uh, right at the um, where they started showing the uh, PlayStation 5, uh, it, it, to me, it kind of looked like that development kit. Um, the, the, uh, the angle of the, I think it was like a V-shape. But as they slowly moved out, you get this beautiful... Uh, white looking uh sony console which the um the curves just the way it all looks is to me i i, I did a, i put up a video and just based on that um reveal trailer and to me it was it's the sexiest console i've ever seen and uh, before that i always thought that the uh sega dreamcast was a beautiful looking console but this thing just blows that out of the water i feel some people don't like it for me i love it uh, some people have said it's grown on, on them over the course of the day. I loved it from the beginning and um, just the whole reveal of that was great. And, and then they show this other model, which is the, um, the one for digital. You can see it's missing the optical drive now. Um, look, we have to face reality here. We are slowly moving down the road of digital games. Um, it's something that I don't personally like i'm a game collector i want physical media i've said that so many times before i'm a collector i want my physical games um but i do understand that we are moving towards that i i, I do believe that this will be the last generation of consoles that will be supporting physical media now some people have agreed some people have disagreed with me that's fine but and i'm just putting it out there as a discussion um because i i, I do think we're moving towards that and and with them doing two models uh, one with a optical drive and one just without it it's it, it does tell me it's going down that way and was really interesting i seen on the um here in australia i don't know about in america with gamestop but um on eb games there's a placeholders um like a page where you can get updates when it's going to be announced for price uh, i sent that off to tim and and greg from uh, uh lone wanderer and um tim commented that was uh, how uh EB Games were only showing showing the um, the one that did physical media, which makes perfect sense for them because they got to sell these games. Selling a digital console um, would be suicide for them. They'd be losing money because people will be downloading games, won't be going into the stores buying physical games. So that's one of my concerns is that we are moving down that road, and we will be getting there with the next the next gen consoles. PlayStation 6 or whatever, but it's something that really does, it, it does worry me. Uh, price does worry me because, let's face it, you, you get a couple of games, there's over, I'm pretty sure over $1,000, maybe even $1,200. Um, you forked out for this thing. Full backward compatibility, we don't know yet. I'm hoping that it will be. Uh, I really do because that means you'll be able to play, you know, in native 4K which would be unbelievable. But um, overall, I'm really happy with the design. I, I just love it. And my wife is a non-gamer and she watched that, that reveal trailer for the PlayStation 5 and she loved the design of it. And <laughs> she says, oh, that would look really good downstairs on the TV unit with the big TV uh, standing up like that. And I was telling her how much the price was, well, what, what I thought. And she said, well, it's worth it. I'm like, oh. 
can I get a, a PlayStation 5 for Christmas? We'll watch this space and see. But yeah, it was really strange for her to say that. And you know, I did put up the um, that little uh, trailer from Sony, the sexiest console ever. I got a lot of great comments on that. Um, yeah, will it be backward compatible? Uh, vertical stand, I, I, I don't know if you can actually lay it down horizontally. That's, I'm look, I looked at it so many times and just the curves on all around that thing. I'm, I'm not too sure about that. It's, it's that's still up in the air. Um, backward compatibility, uh, pricing again. Mick Harrow was saying that. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of great comments. Elon Musk, uh, SpaceX guy, wants their console back. That was really cool. Uh, had some comments from Ozzy Lang Gaming. Uh, it was really cool. So it's really great to have a look at that stuff and have a discussion there about what, what our feelings are about that. But let's get into the games now. I gotta say, um, I was really impressed with what I saw with the games. I, I gotta have a look at this because there was so much stuff to absorb. I, I only watched this thing once. I need to go back and watch it again. And there was a few things I picked up on. I think it was Astro's Playroom. That's that uh, VR game that's on the PlayStation 4. That's coming to the PlayStation 5. Um, what was really interesting during that uh, trailer that it is going to be preloaded on the PlayStation 5. Which sounds really cool, it says preloaded, but is it free to play? <laughs> is it one of those games where you may be able to play one or two levels, but you want to play the rest of the game, you got to buy it digitally. I don't know, but I don't think they're going to be giving that away free for some reason. I just, I'm, I'm just worried about that. But that means I can play that if, if, that's, if it is free, because it looks really great on VR. And I, I don't, I'm not into VR games, but that looked really good. Um, some of the games that I want to talk about, the ones... That really stood out for me. There was one that I thought I cringed, and that was uh, Bug Snack, which had this really ridiculous looking I don't know what it is, it's dog walrus. I don't know what this thing was with this really bad Aussie accent. Uh -huh. It just cringed me so much, and just the way it looked, it didn't, it didn't look next gen to me. So I was not interested in that one at all. I get that maybe for kids, but. Now, the one that really stood out for me, there's about, probably about 10 games here. Uh, of course, Ratchet and Clank, uh, we talked about it on our last podcast that we had a list and I think we got uh, probably about 90% right on this, which is well done, guys. It's really good. But Ratchet and Clank looked amazing. And just with the power of the PlayStation 5, um, when you look at some of the backgrounds, it is massively populated. Now, you wouldn't be able to do that with, I guess, the current gen systems. And that's what Insomniac Games was saying. And it just looked fantastic and there's a new character a female character i don't know what happened to clank a ratchet um during you know one of those bursts going through a portal or dimension i don't know much about the story but it, it looks really cool and i'm really hyped for that one ratchet and clank is one of my favorite series of all time so definitely want to get that uh, that's 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 a, a big tick for me spider-man look really cool you didn't show much on that i i've got the first Spider-Man game from Insomniac Games. I have started playing it. Um, it took me a while to get into it. Uh, only when uh, I realized I was able to upgrade stuff, I really started getting into it. Otherwise, to me, it was an average kind of game, but I can see why a lot of people like that. And as I say, as I, I was upgrading stuff, I'm getting more into that game. So I am looking forward to that one. Now, Sackboy totally surprised me. I thought, oh good, we're going to get another little Big Planet game. And it turns out Sackboy's Big Adventure. So I don't think it's made by a Media Molecule. I think it's been outsourced to another company maybe, but it looked really cool uh, from what it is. I don't think it's going to be like the little Big Planet where you make your own levels. And I think that's a good thing because I'd rather play a game that's been made by a team where you don't have to worry about making your own levels and all that sort of stuff. I just because I don't play those sort of games anymore. I did back in the past, but I'm over those make your own levels, make your own game type stuff. So that looked really cool. I love Sackboy, so really looking forward to that one. Now there was another one called uh, Solar Ash that looked like it's an indie, uh, independent uh, developer for sure. Sure, it doesn't have um, the PlayStation 5 graphics. I don't think, to be honest with you, any of these games have probably pushed the PlayStation 5 to its limits yet. Developers are only, I don't know how long the developers have had this their development kits, maybe a year, year and a half, but I say give it two years of the uh, PlayStation 5 life cycle and we're going to see some truly amazing games and especially from Naughty Dog, if they harness the power of the PlayStation 5, which I know they will, 
they'll whatever they work on next and i hope it's going to be a, a new ip don't make another lost um the last of us or uncharted but i would love to see an uncharted 5 with nathan drake but I, I think companies like that will harness the power of the playstation 5 and you're going to see some kick-ass titles within the next two years i think um but solar ash looked really cool it kind of reminded me of um i don't know if it was like Morphite or some other indie games i got um something like um malaco i don't know it's, it's got uh, a really cool feel to it it is like i said an independent game so don't expect it to have groundbreaking graphics but it looked really cool and if um companies are able to you know independent companies are able to do this and be showcased on this um this event by sony so i think it's something to really look forward to now stray i don't know it will look really weird with this cat it, the whole environment with these are uh, android robots whatever you want to call it look really cool so you i guess you're following this 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 story of the of a cat but that was odd but i'm i'm liking what i saw in that so that's another one to uh, uh, tick off the list for me so that's probably like four games already now there was a, another one by square enix i thought it was going to be a final fantasy game but i think it's project athia which looks incredible um this is something similar they I, I think when they did octopath traveler they they call it project something or whatever so i don't think it's going to be called that that that's not going to be the title of it looks really cool so i am fingers crossed it's going to be a great game um now this this next one was really weird and i i've said this before i love weird odd offbeat titles and little devil inside i think that's the one i've got to have a quick look here but i think it is let me have a quick look but yeah it looked so weird and at the when i was looking at this character running around the screen i'm thinking for some reason just because the way he's all dressed he's all decked out and stuff i was thinking death stranding i don't know why but that's what i was thinking when i was watching this character just go around and you got this dude just sitting in his house doing things taking a crap on the on the toilet um it looks odd it looks weird and i love that kind of stuff so i really am looking forward to that one ah now this next one i i i had no idea what it was right until right to the end i'm watching it i love the whole look the whole gothic look of this game and it drew me in more and more as uh, as it went on and um then i saw this werewolf and i'm thinking oh my god is this going to be like a van helsing game uh i, I love the the uh, van helsing movie from the 90s with uh um oh, hugh jackman that was incredible and seeing this werewolf I'm thinking, oh my god, we're getting a Van Helsing game. But then it comes up, says Village. And I, wow, what, what is this? This is looks incredible. And then a few seconds later, underneath, Resident Evil Village. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, to me, this looks like it's going in a different direction from the other uh, Resident Evil games. It looks very gothic, very Van Helsing. We've got a, a um, werewolf in it. Is there going to be vampire bats in it? Are they moving away from the whole uh, zombie apocalyptic, apocalyptic world or whatever it was? Um, can we see something a bit more fresher? Um, werewolves, vampires. Are we going to see some sort of Frankenstein monsters? But it kind of has that feel and look of Van Helsing. So I'm really hyped for that one. And I haven't played a Resident Evil game since the Dreamcast. So that's going back about what 20 years so that sparked my interest now another game the way it looked at the beginning i thought it was going to be like um an elder scroll game or i even thought for a split second is this going to be uncharted 5 <laughs> i don't know I, I was really wishful thinking for an uncharted 5 uh, i don't know if that's ever going to happen but then it goes on and on and i thought i was starting to think oh is this going to be like a um dark souls or it's going to be like a bloodborne and then it turns out to be the um demon soul uh remake I, I never played that game so i don't know if i'll get that one but it did look really really cool uh gran turismo 7 look i've never played any of the gran turismo games uh the closest thing to a, a gran turismo game i played was by the same company that made a motor tunes grand prix 2 which was fantastic i love that game 
a lot, but I never played the end of the Gran Turismo game, so to me that didn't really interest me. Same with uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. I, I don't know if I, how I feel about that one. It looks really cool, but when it gets into the gameplay, I was like, eh, I don't know if it's for me. Um, it's like a first-person shooter, so I, I'm still not sure about that, but I don't think I'm going to get it. But one of the, the, the two favorite games of mine would have to be Kina Bridge of Spirits. Now, I started watching this trailer and I, I, I thought it was going to be a kid's game when, it, when they first showed it, all those cute, cute characters and graphics and those little fuzzy ball creatures or whatever they were. That goes into the combat and when you look at the environments, it's just so beautiful, green, lush environments. I just love those sort of environments in games. I don't like a lot of these darker, dingier games like, you know, Call of Duty and all that sort of stuff. But something like this, with these environments, it just looks so beautiful. And um, that's one of my must-have games for the PlayStation 5, for sure. Love that one so much. So as we get towards the end of the um, presentation, I was text Tim and said, God of War 2 has to be the last game they showed. But they didn't. They didn't show God of War 2. We'll see at some stage, I know that. But what they did show was... What was it? It was uh, Horizon Forbidden, was it West? So that game really, um, yeah, that was the one that we were all waiting for. I have played uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, I love that. So I can see why a lot of people are really hyped for this game. It's a fantastic game and just the environments in this one. It looks like it's set in um, San Francisco. You can see the San Francisco bridge there. So I guess the story continues as they, they move on to a, another setting. Um, we all think it was going to be Horizon Zero Dawn 2, but Horizon Forbidden West. So really looking forward to that one. So, you know, um, we don't have a release date yet. It's got to be around about late November, early December. I'm guessing more around mid to late November to get these things shipped around the world. And I guess... You know, depending on the price, now this is the big thing, the price is going to be the big thing here. Um, especially if you're going to go for the, uh, f the one that's got the optical drive in it, I think you're going to be paying more for that. But having said that, maybe the one with the um, these S SSD um, hard drives, uh, maybe a ter what, 4 tera flop terabyte, I don't know what these things are anymore, but it's going to have to have more space to fit more games on it and hopefully that you can put a external hard drive on this thing to you know put more games on because i'm sure with the, with the power of the playstation 5 um it's going to be using it so much disk space uh to, to hold these games and run these games uh not off the off the um the optical drives but i definitely will be getting the uh physical uh version of this not the digital that's not the way i want to go um but like i said i am really concerned about the prices of this and i think it was really smart of sony to do this reveal to building up the hype of this thing and you go on twitter you go on every social media at the moment everybody's talking about the playstation 5 so sony's done their job if i think if they would have revealed the price now it would have deflated it a bit the whole event because i think it's it's going to hurt the wallet this thing is not going to be cheap, um, that's for sure. That's where I think it's going to be. And I think by not talking about the price at this stage was a smart move from Sony. Although everybody wants to see what this price is. But I think, you know, be ready. Seriously, be ready, guys. Um, if you want to get this thing, start saving those coins. I'm actually, I, I, I collect um, uh, cans for recycling centers, 10 cents a can. I'm, I've got heaps of... Uh, bags of cans downstairs I got to take to the recycle center so I'm going to be putting everything I can towards this PlayStation 5 because I'm going to get one at release depending on what games they have if they only release a couple of games that I like I may hold off another six seven months but if I see games like Horizon Forbidden West, Ratchet and Clank uh, what else? Um, Kina, if I see all these sort of games, it's like, oh, I gotta get it, and I will. I, I'm a gamer. What can you know? What can I do? I, I just the way it is. But yeah, it's, it's it's built the hype. I'm hyped. A lot of people out there are hyped. Some don't like it. Some do. You know, take it as it is. We're all different. But let's face the facts. This thing looks 
damn sexy so yeah leave a comment down below what do you think what games you're looking forward to speculate on the price that's the big thing at the moment speculation on the price it's just going to be be ready that's all i gotta say be ready for something high but um yeah kina is the one that this sticks to my mind more than horizon and ratchet and clank just by the overall look of it and the beauty of it so that's saying something so until next time guys thanks very much for watching this i've put up a couple of videos over the last two days a lot to i'm sorry i'm sorry for that but it's just the way it's way it is with this event until next time guys bye